Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 includes 5 Six Flags parks where they recreated those real parks as accurately as possible, or have they? How accurate are those parks actually? In this video we're going to see how true to real life Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 Six Flags Holland is compared to the actual park, which is now called Wallaby Holland. The game came out a long time ago, in October 2002, so we need to take that into account and not judge it by what the park looks like right now, but rather what it looked like 21 years ago. So rides like Lost Gravity and Untamed, however cool they are, don't have to be in there. If we start by looking at the entrance, there is immediately a big discrepancy. In the game, the guests reach the park by walking through a wooded grassy bit, but that's very wrong. In reality, there are some empty fields and a plaza with a fountain in the middle, next to a massive parking lot. This parking lot is also completely absent, although I'm guessing that the road they built next to Goliath is supposed to kind of represent it. It could also be the N306, which is the actual road that the park is next to, but that's a straight road and much further away from the park, it wouldn't be on the plot. Walking through the entrance we arrive at some sort of plaza with a bunch of buildings on the left, a big building in front of us and some arch-like things on the right. This is all perfectly accurate, or at least as accurate as you can reasonably be within the limitations of Rollercoaster Tycoon. However, if we go into the big building in front of us, there's a very big thing that's missing. There's a path to the right, a path forward, and a very big spot of nothing where there should be something to the left. This is where the big launched roller coaster Express Platform 13 stands, and it's rather hard to miss. There's no angle on Google Street View that you can see it from, but you can see it on these old satellite images from 2005 with its bright red and blue colors. It had these colors back then because originally it was called Superman the Ride, and I've read online that this is not the only ride themed after a DC Comics character that's missing in RCT2, leading to the theory that Chris Sawyer couldn't get a license to use those characters and thus left them out. The lake that the main part of the coaster is on is there and while the shape is a bit simplified, it's accurate enough. On to the right side then, to the area that was called Italia back in 2002. In the game, this contains a boomerang corkscrew coaster named La Via Volta, a merry-go-round called Cavalli Barocca and a twist with the name Il Gladiator. These are all accurate and in roughly the right locations, but boy, there's a whole lot that's missing. First, there should be a restaurant building next to the merry-go-round that just isn't there, but more importantly, the big swing ride between the merry-go-round and the twist is suspiciously absent. Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 doesn't have a swing ride type, so I guess it is understandable that they didn't put it in. I initially thought that there was another small error with the location of the station of the Six Flags Express, as that's no longer next to the main street now, but back then it was indeed there. From Italia we can move upwards to Bugs Bunny World, except we can't as that entire area is missing in RCT2. Nowadays this is called Wallaby Playland and walking through it on Google Street View there are quite a lot of rides there. First we pass Splash Battle which wasn't built until 2005, but then we enter this area and there are tons of kids rides. According to the very useful website wallaby24.nl, these were all built in 2000 or earlier, meaning that this entire area existed when this scenario was built. I do understand that there is no good equivalent for these tiny kids rides in the game, but at least build something there. Now both Italia and the area on the other side are just dead ends, which is not only inaccurate but also quite bad for pathfinding reasons. Anyway, let's move on to that other area, which is called Wild Wild West, and it is also quite inaccurate. From Bugs Bunny World, we would have ended up near the Flying Dutchman Gold Mine, which is standing there all alone. The ride itself is almost perfect, but man, why did they make it so lonely? There should be loads of buildings and other rides around it, but instead it's condemned to a lifetime of loneliness. No wonder it moved to France in 2011. Firstly, there is the Frisbee Ride Tomahawk, built in 2000 and nowhere to be found. Again, this is likely because RCT2 doesn't have such a ride type, but the lack of all these rides makes the park feel quite empty. 
There also used to be a so-called double inverter right and a chaos right in this area, removed in 2004 and 2005 respectively. I can't find exactly where they stood as the oldest satellite images that I could find are from December 2005, but it was somewhere in this area. Not only are there missing flat rights, but there also aren't any buildings. These buildings with the rodeo and theater are fairly easy to recreate somewhat accurately in the game, yet they were all left out. Continuing the tour of the park we walked through a bunch of trees towards the other side of the wild wild west. We crossed the railroad before arriving at the little plaza with the food stall, the log flume crazy river and the pirate ship Captain Kidd. This is mostly accurate but a little bit distorted. The railway crossing is too close to the wild mouse and so is the entrance to the pirate ship. There is a plaza but it's missing a food or drink stall which is something that you'll often see in this park. The crazy river log flume is the only thing here that's truly accurate. Of course, the curves aren't all a perfect 90 degrees in real life, but those are the limitations of the game and within those limitations it's very well done. The only mistake really here is the queue line, which in reality goes out and under the track instead of just staying inside the little station building. Instead of moving on from here, let's go back to the building at the start and now walk forwards into France. On the right there is La Tour des Jardins, a quaint little car ride through some gardens that's very accurately recreated. There's a fountain in the middle and then a merry-go-round on the left before we arrive at the big ferris wheel in the center of the park. This is also all accurate enough. If we had continued our tour when we were at Crazy River, we would have arrived on the side of the ferris wheel, once again crossing the Six Flags Express. Obviously in real life these are level crossings instead of bridges, but those didn't exist in RCT2 until OpenRCT2 introduced them many years after this park was released. Walking north we enter Sherwood Forest and arrive at Excalibur, the topspin. Not much to say about it except that the whole thing should be mirrored and the path should be on the right of it instead of on the left. What is missing is the tri-star ride Sherwood's Revenge in between the ferris wheel and the topspin, which is probably another case of a ride not existing in RCT2, although the twist is a fairly close match. A little bit further on we have Robin Hood, and like most roller coasters, it's almost a perfect match. There are a lot of missing rides and differences in general park layout, but when it comes to roller coasters, they really tried their hardest to make it as accurate as possible with the available track pieces. The name of the game is Roller Coaster Tycoon after all. In between Excalibur and Robin Hood should have been the entrance and exit to Merlin's Magic Castle, but those are both in very different positions. The ride is also not a haunted house as it is in the game, but rather a madhouse. A madhouse is a ride where you're sitting in a room swinging back and forth like a pirate ship. However, the room itself can spin a full 360 degrees around the seats, making it feel like you're upside down even though you're not. This amazing footage is from the one in the Efteling and was taken by Eftel Wesley, who has documented pretty much everything in that park. Check out his website eftelwesley.nl to see footage of all of the Efteling's rides. These kinds of indoor rides wouldn't really work in our city too, so the haunted house is close enough. Taking a left, we leave Sherwood Forest and enter the speed zone, which is targeted towards thrill seekers. In between that though, there is the entrance to Skydive, a ride that drops you from a 60 meter tall tower. This ride would be extremely difficult to recreate, so it makes sense that it's not there. Arriving in the speed zone, we can see that in the game, this area consists only of the Enterprise G-Force and the Launch Freefall Space Shot, making this probably the least accurate area of the entire park. First off, this path between the freefall and the haunted house doesn't exist and the Enterprise should have been built next to the water instead of where it is right now. And then there are the missing rides, ooh boy. First there is the go-kart, which is in between the Enterprise and the Goliath. The go-kart's ride type exists in the game, but was somehow not built in this park. If it was there, walking past that go-kart would make you end up at Goliath, the flagship coaster of the park, opened just a few months before the game came out. Goliath does exist in the park and is just like the other coasters incredibly accurately designed, but the pathing towards it is entirely wrong. 
Instead of walking around the white coaster and past the go-kart, this section with the cars doesn't exist at all and instead you access Goliath by going underneath the white coaster. From a pathfinding perspective this makes sense, but they didn't care about that earlier with Italia and the Wild Wild West, so I'm not sure why this was done. The theming of Goliath is also very underwhelming. Where is the plaza with the Goliath sign and the very long queue line that goes under the cable lift of the coaster? As good as the track itself is, I'm incredibly disappointed with everything around it. There is one area left to explore, Mexico. Before getting there we pass some buildings with some fairground games, which are entirely absent in the game. The first thing in the Mexico area is the breakdance ride El Toro, which was removed in 2005, but also in 2002 as it's not here. A little further along there is a plaza with a massive food court and a bunch of rides, two of which are missing. There's a Dodgems that's absent and there used to be a magic carpet ride called Aztec as well, which I think you can see here on this old satellite image. Just like the go-kart, this ride type does exist in the game, so I have no idea why it wasn't included. Hacienda the food court, Los Sombreros the twist and El Condor the suspended looping coaster are all there though. Again the coaster is immaculate but as we've seen before the pathing isn't. There is no path under it that leads to Goliath and the queue line is also quite a bit longer in reality. Going down a bit we arrive at the last ride of the park, El Rio Grande de River Rapids. The ride is recreated fairly well except that it goes the wrong way around. When looked at from above it goes counterclockwise, clearly indicated by this long queue of boats waiting to enter the station and also evidenced by the fact that I have ridden it several times and remember which way it goes. In RCT2 it goes the other way around though, it goes clockwise and I see no good reason why that was done so it's probably just a mistake. What's worse is the path around it that goes from Goliath past the back of El Condor and El Rio Grande back to the big central street in the France area. This straight up doesn't exist in the actual park and I only assume that it was put there for pathfinding reasons, which once again makes the absence of path between La Via Volta and the Flying Dutchman goldmine that much weirder. And that was the entire park. In conclusion, the track rides that are there are generally very accurate and the terrain is quite accurate as well, with water and trees in mostly the correct places. However, a lot of flat rides and one big coaster are missing, as are a bunch of buildings and a few important pathways, which in some cases have been replaced by new non-existing paths. I want to thank the folks at wallaby24.nl for their work on archiving every ride that has ever existed in Six Flags Holland. It helped a lot with figuring out which rides were in the park in 2002. To learn where the coaster icons in RCT2 come from, click this video right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.